Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain, and I'm your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 270 of our trek, and the past two days on our hike, we use the simile of how life is like a seed. Today, we want to finish this comparison with part three. There are many parallels in both the physical and the spiritual perspective. If you miss any of our Wisdom Trek episodes, please go to wisdom-trek.com to listen to them and to read the Daily Journal. We are recording our podcast from the studios of the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. I am making some progress on varnishing the woodwork in the library. There is a lot of wood to cover in addition to the floor. I could easily spend full time working on the Big House, but at this point in our lives, it is still required that we earn income to work, to live, and to meet our financial obligations. As always, our client workload remains busy, so it does require a lot of focus to complete all this work. But this is how life is, one step in front of the other as we trek on each day. On the past two days, we learned about the seeds and the conditions needed for germination. Let's continue on our trail today as we seek out more information about planting the seeds and what is required for growth. This is the final day of our comparison about how life is like a seed. First, we want to look at the work, planting the seeds that grow. Ultimately, the seed's purpose is to reproduce its own kind, but there are various levels of harvest. In front of a large crowd, Jesus told the parable about the farmer scattering the seed. In the story, in Luke chapter 8 and verse 5, he says, A farmer went out to plant the seed as he scattered it across the fields. We see in this parable that there are different growing environments within this field, yielding various rates of failure and success. Later, Christ explained to his disciples privately the types of soils that were in the field in verses 11 through 15, where Jesus said, This is the meaning of the parable. The seeds that fell upon the footpath represent those who hear the message, only to have the devil come and take it away from their hearts and prevent them from believing and being saved. The seeds on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and receive it with joy. But since they do not have deep roots, they believe it for a while, then they fall away when they face temptation. The seeds that fell among the thorns represents those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and so they never grow to maturity. And the seeds that fell upon the good soil represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. We see the purpose of doing God's work is to scatter the seeds on whatever soil is around us. We are not responsible for the size of the harvest. God will take care of that. Throughout the ages of the past, the way the seeds were scattered was through the technology that was available to them at that time. Today we have the capability of scattering God's word to practically the entire world from wherever God has placed us. The internet has become a powerful tool for spreading the seed of God's word, and it's only the beginning. We must not pass up this opportunity, but take advantage of it. We can compare this growth to either a fruit or a nut-bearing tree. At first, the tree is just a sapling, just one little stem but soon it grows more branches, at first two and then four on the following year, and even more every year after that. Eventually the tree becomes mature enough to bear fruits or nuts, but only as much as the branches are able to bear. For instance, the oak tree will not usually produce a significant amount of acorns until approximately its 20th year, but every 20 years afterwards, it will more than triple its production of acorns. Yes, God does start things small even in the plant kingdom, setting us an example to learn from. Consider how tiny the church was in the early years of the apostles. But through the years, as technology has improved and the population has increased, we have so many more ways to scatter seeds to reach the entire world. The next area we want to look at is growth by trial. Just as some seeds need to be exposed by fire to germinate, we may endure trials, sometimes even fiery ones, throughout our lives. We can be confident that we will not be destroyed by these trials, that we can endure them, as described in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, which tells us, The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you can endure. Also, in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, we are told, These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through the many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day that Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. When a seed is exposed to fire, extreme heat, or a period of freezing temperatures, a chemical change occurs, which triggers the seed to grow. In the same way, trials trigger us to grow. God uses problems, troubles, and afflictions to strengthen His children 
to cause us to learn, to change, to grow, and to overcome. As we stated yesterday, some seeds must be exposed to complete darkness for germination to occur. Likewise, we may go through periods of darkness in our lives, when life seems bleak and all hope is faded. This has occurred to even some of God's greatest servants, including Job, Joseph, and King David. Once a seed has germinated and developed into a mature plant, it still faces many obstacles. The strongest trees are the ones that face the heavy winds when they are young. Anytime we face adversity, we need to consider it an opportunity for great joy because it will strengthen us, as James tells us in chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. As we consider how life is like a seed, we need to realize that the purpose of every seed is to reproduce its own kind. Each seed has the potential to grow into a new, fully mature plant. In the same way, God is reproducing His own kind through us, as is written in Romans chapter 8, verses 29 and 30. For God knew His people in advance, and He chose them to become like His Son, so that His Son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, He called them to come to Him. And having called them, He gave them a right standing with Himself. And having given them the right standing, He gave them His glory. So the next time that you are planting in your garden, or you see a farmer planting in his field, remember the example that God has given us in the little seed. Tomorrow on our trek, I will ask you, how heavy is your backpack? So encourage your family and friends to join us, and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. That will finish our podcast for today. Just as you enjoy these daily doses of wisdom, I would ask you for your help to grow Wisdom Trek by sharing it with your family and friends through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person so that they can come along with us each day. The journal for today's trek can be found at wisdom-trek.com. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.